All right, here we are. This is probably going to be the third to last video of the season. After this, we'll review Homestead, and then after that, I'll review the whole season. But here it is, the final race predictions video. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, this is what I predicted to happen over the course of the season. I had this section perfectly correct, except I didn't put it down on NASCAR.com, so I lost out on $100,000. Thank you, Kyle Busch, for taking away my college. But anyway, um, it would have been wrong anyway, because Jimmy Johnson and Dale Jr. got the boot at Talladega. So, yes. My final predictions were incorrect. Only Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick survived. And, you know, 50% ain't bad. Considering, you know, everything else down here was correct. Uh, but anyway. Yes. So, this is what really happened. And today... <coughs> God, I should not be talking. We're only going to be talking about this today. Yeah. So, originally I was going to go through every single one of these guys and talk about how their chase went. But we all know how everyone's chases went. They lost, and they won. At least up until now. After Sunday. Only one can win. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. So. Um, if you'll remember, that is the man that I chose to win this championship. He has a chance still. And let me tell you why. He's lucky. That's honestly... That's honestly the only reason why he made it this far. He had the worst chase out of everyone on this list, even worse than Ryan Newman, and the, and the chase has been the bane of Ryan Newman's existence, even though it came into existence because of Ryan Newman. You know, it was created to benefit Ryan Newman, and it's only not benefited Ryan Newman, so yeah, how's that working out for you? But anyway... Denny the Ham Sandwich. It's been an up and down year for me and Denny. At the start I was like, okay, Denny Hamlin exists. Like at the start of every year I'm like, okay, Denny Hamlin exists. And then usually he gets into the championship fray early and it's normally going up against Johnson, so... He's like the heel character that's going against John Cena at any given point in WWE. I mean... There's no one else to like. I mean, you're going up against the John Cena of NASCAR. Okay, I should not be that mean Jimmy Johnson. He actually has talent, but anyway. He's like the Don John Cena of NASCAR, where everyone's just pl playing against him. No one wants him to win, yet he always wins. Five fucking times in a row. That is not six championships. Fuck that noise. But anyway... So Danny Hamlin's always been the protagonist for me. In like 2008 and 2010. 2010 most notably, but I think it was 2008. Maybe that was Carl. It's been Danny Hamlin twice. Oh, it was Carl Edwards twice. It's only been Hamlin once. What the fuck am I talking about? But anyway. Uh, the... We have, um... We had Talladega that Denny Hamlin won, and that race was complete bullshit. I'm not gonna lie. It's the only reason Denny Hamlin got into the chase. And that kind of sucks, because that race was bullshit. There was a wreck right in front of the flag man, and he didn't throw the caution. Like, are you kidding? It happened right in front of the flagman, and he didn't throw a caution. 
bull. Bull fucking bull. It's a bull fucking bull. Bulls fucking bulls. It's a bull fucking a bull. And there's just shit everywhere. That is exactly what that is. But anyway. Yeah. It's been an up and down year for me and Denny Hamlin. I mean, it was at like that point that I was the most pissed off with Denny Hamlin that I've ever been. And now that he made it, and then, and now that it, and then when the chase came around, I was like, okay, he's got the best chance. So I may as well like him so that when the time comes, I won't be mad that he won the championship. But, but Denny's grown back onto me this season. I mean, he's always been at the right place and the right time for me to like him, so, you know, Denny Hamlin's very lucky. Kevin Harvick. Oh, my life with Kevin Harvick. It started out pretty well for Harvick because he was the cover guy of NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup, my favorite NASCAR game ever. And that helped his cause a lot because, uh, you know, just, you know, you know, but, um, he wasn't really, yeah, he had a cool car, okay, he had a, he had a pretty cool car, not gonna lie, Dale Earnhardt's car was pretty bad, it was badass, in like a minimalist way, like, the way that, let's see, whose car was really badass this year? Um, we went a badass car this year. I don't know we went a badass car this year. There weren't many of that. There weren't too many crazy paint schemes this year, were there? I'm scrolling through every driver that I can remember, but I can't really think of any standout paint schemes that happened. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I can't think of any. Shoot. But anyway. Yeah. And then... The 2007 Daytona 500 happened, and uh, yeah, that was it for Harvick, never again. And um, over the years, he started building back onto me again. Then he started being a douchebag this year with his dominant cars, and I've been like, God damn it, Harvick, stop leading all these races. Why? Why are you a dick? Yeah. So as for Harvick this year, you could say it's been his career year, and considering, I think it's just his second year at Stuart Haas, yeah, right? It's been his second year, isn't it? I'm stupid, I don't know. I know Kurt Busch just joined this year, but I thought that Kevin was there for two years now. What the fuck do I know, though? But anyway... It's looking pretty good for Harvick over at Stuart Haas. And, um, I think Kurt Busch is going to have a good year next year because he's got the good cars and, um, good crew chief. But that's next year. Kevin Harvick, on the other hand, this will probably be his best year at Stuart Haas for at least another three years. He'll probably have a slump like Matt Kenseth has had this year. And, you know, Matt Kenseth really didn't have a slump at all. He's been the most consistent. He just didn't win at Phoenix. You know, this is hardly a slump for Matt Kenseth. He's finishing good, it's just not first. So, I can't really call Matt Kenseth the year a slump. But I'm guessing Kevin Harvick will probably have a year like this for Matt Kenseth. He'll, he'll finish good, he'll contend, but he won't win races. So, yeah. Um, as for his chances at Homestead, he's pretty consistent there. I really never pay attention to Kevin Harvick this time of year, except for in 2010. So, I really don't know how he does. Uh, he's into the mile and a half track, because he's kind of owned those for the most of the year, you know, <laughs> you know, but anyway, <laughs> oh god, 
I should not be talking. I should be getting sleep and, like, drinking. I should be fucking chugging mouthwash so that I can get rid of this sore fucking throat. But anyway, yeah, I'd say Kevin Harvick, if Denny Hamlin wasn't here, would probably have the best chance of the other drivers. But Denny Hamlin's here, and he owns at Homestead, Miami, so, yep, moving along. Joey Logano. How can one guy go from, like, the most neutral on the field for me to the most hated in one race? Well, let me take you back to 2012 Pocono. I think it was 2012. Pretty sure it was 2012. Mark Martin was leading. Then, at the end of the race, he wasn't. Like he seems to always be. So yeah, fuck you, Joey Logano, in the face. And that is when I really started hating Joey Logano, and the hatred has only grown exponentially, especially this year, since he should not even be in the 22. That should be Sam Hornus Jr.'s car. He earned it. He fucking earned it. He got his ass whipped in the Sprint Cup Series. He got his shit together in the Nationwide Series. He was ready to move back up. And then this fuck takes it over. This should be Sam Hornish Jr.'s five-win season. Sam will be lucky to do anything in the Richard Petty Motorsports. He should be in this Penske vehicle. He should be on top of this, on top of the charts. This should be Sam Hornish Jr. making a run for the Spirit Cup Championship. Not this fucking fuck. As for his chances, I really have no idea, honestly. It could go any way because, you know, this Logano is completely different than any Logano of any past. And this Penske team is unlike any Penske team of the past. So this is going to be completely foreign territory for both team and driver. So, I have absolutely no idea how it's going to go. I can only hope that it goes bad. But that's just me. New man. Ryan New Man. I've never, ever had a problem with Ryan Newman. He's like... He's literally exactly the way that I would probably act as a NASCAR driver. I'd talk a lot of shit. I'd call out NASCAR on their stupidity, and I'd call out other drivers on their stupidity, and I'd probably wreck all the time at Talladega, but that's just me. Anyway, Newman had a career year back in 2003, winning eight times, I believe, but he did not win the championship. And that is why we have the chase today. You know what? I want Ryan Newman to win this championship. No, not, not just because he honestly deserved it back in 2003, but, um, but because if he wins this championship without winning any races, I mean, even if he wins this race, can you imagine what would happen to the chase? Ryan Newman would have one win on the season, just like Matt Kenseth did in 2003 when he won the championship. If Ryan Newman won this championship, winning only one race, can you imagine? The chase could disappear. It could disappear. I'm not saying that it would, and I'm not saying that it's really likely that it would. But it could disappear. And that would be great. It's what we've been, it's what we've been asking for for so long. And that's why I'm cheering on Ryan Newman this weekend. Along with Denny Hamlin, because I know he's going to win the championship. Not only that. I'm not only cheering Denny Hamlin because he's obviously going to win this championship. But because he's got... One win on the season, and if he doesn't win at Homestead, 
and won the championship. He only had one win. This is why I wanted Matt Kenseth to be the one to move on to the Final Four. Because he's the most consistent of all these drivers, but he doesn't have a win. So, I, re I was really hoping it would come full circle, and the chase would begin and end with Matt Kenseth. But, you know, maybe the chase will begin and end with Ryan Newman. But that's just a thought. So as for Ryan Newman's actual virtual chances, they're virtually nothing. Because he has had not the prettiest of seasons. How he's made it this far is beyond me. He's been staying out of trouble recently, which is amazing, because Ryan Newman likes to stir said trouble up. And how he's been staying out of it is, quite honestly, a testament to how much he win, wants to win this championship. Because if he wasn't confident in himself to be able to do this, he'd just be stirring up shit like he always does. But he's got a legitimate chance now, kind of. Not really, actually. But you know, Denny Allen has a bad day. Kevin Harvick gets screwed at the end of the race, just like he always has been this season, and Logano just fucks off from all of existence. You know, Ryan Newman, I'd have a chance at it. He might finish in 15th place like he has most of the year, but, you know, he might have a chance. He might have a chance. And that is your four drivers. And you may notice how I have them ordered here. Well, that is how I believe that they're going to finish. And who the hell knows, maybe that will be mm. first, second, third, and fourth. No, I doubt it, though, because Ryan Newman is consistently finishing 15th. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That is where I stand on this. So, hopefully, I will have this up on Thursday. Hopefully, so, I, so you can discuss it before the big race. And I will be having the race review after the race, and then I will try to have some sort of really long season wrap-up video um, until I get internet. It'll probably be the last NASCAR video for 2014. And then once I do get internet, I can start looking at the news and J-Ski again so that I can have, you know, video ideas for NASCAR-related stuff. And um, I'll try to keep posting NASCAR 07 so that you can have NASCAR stuff to watch. Well, the off-season is going on. And, uh, yeah. Starting, hopefully, next year. I'll have preview shows where I, um, something similar to this, where I run down how the race should go with my, you know, extensive knowledge of NASCAR. And then I'm going to have really in-depth race reviews. What I'm going to try to do is take notes during the entire race for stuff that happened so I could talk about it during the review so I'm not just flailing around with memories. And during the restrictor plate races, hopefully later on in the season, like Talladega, um, fall race. Hopefully I will be able to do a live reactions video for that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do many live reactions. I don't know. Next year, but I know once I get to college I'll probably be able to do all four restrictor play races with live reactions. Oh yeah. So, um, that is a look ahead. Not sure if I'm going to do previews yet, but I'm going to try to do the note-taking stuff at least once the second race of the season rolls around. I already forgot what it was. I don't know if they changed it. Because it used to be Phoenix, but I don't know what the fuck it is now. It used to be California before that. I know that much. But anyway, I have digressed to make this video 20 minutes long. You're welcome. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you after the race at Homestead. And hopefully... I'll get tickets to see a race live. 
And, you know, maybe I'll post some stuff from that, too. You never know. Bye-bye.